Aviators, I'm Lara Simmons here with your school news. Well, this past Thursday, you may have noticed a little bit of ruckus. Well, the Union and Confederates came back to life as the fifth graders reenacted a war scene. What happened was that General Pickett led the Confederates into a suicide mission. I was lucky enough to see the reenactment firsthand. Let's go see what happened. I'm here at the site of where this battle is taking place in Pennsylvania. Here on my left are the Confederates and on the right are the Unions. Mr. Fury, the fifth grade teacher, is conducting this battle and right now the Confederates are emerging out of the woods. You can see them. Look at them. Here they go. Where are the Unions? Wow, well luckily that did not have too much bloodshed. And I hear a small rumor that, that there was a Civil War hospital Friday. I guess Anna and Danielle will catch up on that. Also, girls volleyball open gyms are still open on Tuesdays from 3 to 4.30 at the school gym. And now on Thursdays from 2.45 until 4.30, there are open gyms for high school boys basketball. This week's spotlight is Maria Hernandez. Maria has been playing basketball and volleyball since sixth grade. Thanks for meeting with me today, Maria. So how did you first get involved with basketball and volleyball? Well, in sixth grade, I started basketball. And I didn't like soccer anymore, so I decided I'd give basketball a try. And then in seventh grade, I didn't have anything to do for vo when volleyball was going on. So I did volleyball. So are you planning on being on the team this year? And how, if you are, how are you planning to help the team out? Yeah, I plan on being on both basketball and volleyball, and I plan on just improving and listening to the coaches and just be encouraging to the team and stuff like that. Thank you. Thanks, Maria, for sharing your story. This has been Alaire Simmons, and I'm Gal Pinal. Hey, everyone. This is Alex Gal coming to you with another great segment. First on today's agenda, Roaring Springs. For a long time, Roaring Springs has been a Boise's Meridian's sole source of entertainment for teenagers and kids. It has stood as a beacon amongst the darkness, the eye of the storm, if you will. At Roaring Springs, you can slide the slides and swim in the pools, and if you're feeling really wild, you can go down the avalanche. Now, as you know, Roaring Springs isn't open during the winter. If it were, we would all freeze to death, and a really dramatic scene from Titanic would play or something. <laughs> Never let go. I promise. <laughs> That's why it's only open during the summer. So without further ado, I give you Roaring Springs opening date. Roaring Springs officially opens up for business on May 12th, a Saturday. Can't wait to see everyone there. And remember, season passes are always available. Next, for those of you who haven't heard, The Avengers is coming out on May 4th. The movie, including such epic superheroes as Thor, Iron Man, and even Captain America, will feature in them all working together to stop an incredibly powerful force that none of them can defeat alone. And lastly, something I don't think any of you know is that there's more to do in Idaho than you previously thought. Yeah, that's right. There's actually an amusement park in Idaho. An amusement park. And they didn't tell you. It's called Silverwood, and it's also probably the most fun place in all of Idaho. I know, not saying much, but it rivals the entertaining powers that Lagoon has always had. Silverwood includes a theme park, as previously stated, a roller coaster that travels up to 60 miles per hour, and even goes through the Silverwood gift shop, and even a water park. The water park is just as fun as Roaring Springs, but the wave pool isn't allowed to have any tubes. Needless to say, this amusement park is one to check out. Unfortunately for you guys, it's located in Coeur d'Alene, about a seven-hour drive all the way up to northern Idaho. But don't let that stop you. The park opens up on May 5th. Beg your parents. This has been Alex Scow, and I am scowwalking my way out of here. Yeah! 
Good morning, aviators, and welcome to a super duper broadcast. For world news today, rare Madagascan poachard ducks were hatched into captivity. The poachers are being kept at a special center in Ansohi, Madagascar. With the, new, with the new arrival of poachard ducks, it brings the total population to 60. This is much better than the number 22 cited in 2006. Let's just take a look at these fantastic birds. 18 ducklings doing well and representing about a third of the world's entire population. These youngsters were born in Madagascar, the first generation to be hatched from captive birds. And this is what they will grow into, a striking cinnamon-coloured bird with a bright diamond-like eye. In 2009, about 20 eggs were collected from the one lake in northern Madagascar where the pochard survived. They hatched successfully and now a second generation has come along. Now you can see the beak tapping on the inner surface. See the baby inside moving. Excellent. It was an exciting moment for conservationists when the birds hatched. It's hoped they'll be released into the wild next year if a suitable lake can be found for them. The one where they're currently struggling to survive is believed to be home to a sizable and hungry crocodile. Andy Moore, BBC News. For national news, how many of you thought it was hot in the month of March? If you thought it was hot, you were right. 15,000 temperature records were broken over the entire month, and some of those were in Idaho. The average temperature was 51.1 degrees Fahrenheit, 8.6 degrees higher than the 20th century average. So get ready, Compass, because summer's almost here. For local news, a new online website called Next Door South Boise Village webpage has come into the lives of many local people. People are now able to talk to their neighbors without having to leave the comfort of their own home and have accomplished much more than most neighborhood meetings. Well, that's all for today, Compass, because I'm Klaus Hume, and you can trust me, I'm not a weatherman. <laughs>
you for continuing to hold. Your call is important to us. It'll be answered in... Hello, Sheriff Mackey. Please hold for the governor. Sorry to bother you in the middle of the night like this, but uh, a young man was just booked into your jail for impersonating a police officer, and it turns out that this young man is a good friend of mine, and I'm going to need to have him released immediately. Immediately? No, no, no. I, I can't. I can't. You can't? Or you won't? Hey. Big mistake, pal. Now you just hold. And she's buying a stairway to... You've reached the Central Intelligence Agency. Identify yourself. What? You called me? Ah, I don't got time for this. Uh, if you see a faded sign at the side of the road that says 15 miles to the... Uh, Mr. Mackey, please hold for the president. What? One, two, three. I was born in the USA. Well, Mr. Mackey. Mr. President, wow. Uh, I'm hereby clearing all charges against this uh, young man and ordering his immediate release uh, from your facility. Uh, there will be uh, no mention of this to anyone, uh, 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 no paperwork, and uh, uh, no delay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm now handing you over to Gary Busey. Gary Busey is the man who makes sure that we get things done around here. But before you Sheriff Mackey.